This is Mr. Smith, and we are going to be using Inkscape to make a title card that is superimposed on top of our video. Now to start off, I'm going to get a screen capture of my video around the part where I want it to be superimposed. And there's a bunch of different ways we can do this. I'm going to use the snipping tool, which is available on Windows 7 on up if I click on the start button and I type in the word SNIP, S-N-I-P, which I know you can't see it on your screen, but just believe me that it's there. It auto-completes the snipping tool. I can click on that, and that opens up this thing. And if you don't like how things are getting grayed out and stuff, you press Escape, and it's better. If you click on the triangle next to New, you have a bunch of options available to you but we want to do not a window snip, not a full screen snip, because this is not full screen. If we do a window snip, it's gonna get this border here, which we don't want. I am just going to do a rectangular snip, and I am going to trace the edge of my screen here. And there we go. Edit, copy. And now we're going to go to Inkscape, Edit, paste. You could also use command keys for that. So there we go. Now that's obviously not exactly the size that I want to use. We need to go into our document properties in Inkscape. Document properties, we get this pop up. And we want this to be high resolution, high def. So we're going to change this to PX for pixels. And HD video is, say it with me, 1280 by 720. And when you change it here, it changes automatically on here. And I usually tell it to show the border on top of the drawing as well, so I don't lose track of where it is. And now I can stretch this. Now, if you want to keep things to scale, if you hold the control key down when you click on the corner arrows and drag, then you change both height and width at the same time and scroll down horribly. You don't have to worry about say, stretching yourself out to make silly funhouse mirror caricatures of yourself. Okay, so I am to scale on here. I've got my border in place. Now to add the text. And to do that, of course, we're going to use the text tool, which because of how I've arranged my screen, it's hard to see, but it's always over here somewhere. And if you don't see it right away, just click on the little arrows down here and click on text. And I have the text tool, and I usually just click and type. If you triple click, you can select everything. I want to change my font. I need a good font. Um, the one I want isn't on this computer. So let's do another one. Trebuchet is a pretty good font. I like Trebuchet. Okay, now the reason why I didn't worry about changing the size on here is because I really like changing the size with the Select tool better. I can stretch things out to fit however I want them to, and I really like being able to do that. And once I'm happy with this, I'm going to duplicate it, but I'm not happy with this yet. Uh, you see, I'm going to have some text going down here as well, and there's darker areas down here, and there's dark area in this corner here, so that makes it harder to see what's going on with this. So I'm going to mess with the colors. If you go down to where it says Fill and Stroke and double-click, you'll get a, another window that pops up on the side here. There's other ways to get it to pop up, but that's really fast, so I always do it that way. Now the fill, I think I'm going to go with... Now, I got that green background, and I like that, so... Maybe try some green? And that looks really bad like that. I've got bright green on top of green. It, it doesn't work well. So we're going to add a stroke, which is something I've told students to do in the past anyway. That puts a border around the text. And I can go to this little slider here to change the color of that. But it's black. So I've got a dark background, well, dark stroke, rather, against a green color for the text. That's a good high contrast. I like that. We're going to go to stroke style. We're going to crank that up a little bit until I'm happy with its thickness. 
and that's going to be something that shows up well against darker backgrounds because you've got the bright green text and lighter backgrounds because you've got the black, which is by default dark, border around it. So that's going to show up against pretty much any background. And I can make that larger if I want to, but as you can see, it's starting to look really, really ugly. So find a happy medium. And once you are happy with how one line of text is set up, if you're doing multiple lines, what I usually do is I will take that one and I will control D, like in dog, to duplicate it, move it down to where I want the next line to be, triple click and just start typing. And I'm doing all caps because I don't have to worry about making mistakes where I forget to capitalize something. And I could leave it like this where they're both the same size for everything. Sometimes I like to go in and adjust so that they're also the same width, even though that squishes the letters a little bit. And there we go. I could, at this point, if I wanted a title card for, say, YouTube or whatever, I could go up to File, Export PNG Image, make sure I've selected the page, because if I've selected Selection, then it might just be exporting Media Arts or something, and that gets annoying. If I pick Drawing and I had anything that was off the edge, it's going to not follow the right dimensions. Page, it's going to follow exactly. As you can see here, it's going to be 1280 by 720. If those numbers are wrong, you can change them. Export as, this is where I pick where it's exporting to. I'm just going to pick my desktop for now because why not? I can give it a better name than this. I'm going to be lazy because this is a tutorial anyway. Hit save. That doesn't export anything. I have to actually press the export button for that to happen. And now I've exported it, and I've got a title card that I can upload to YouTube that's going to look pretty much exactly like this. But that's not why I was making this. I was making this to superimpose this stuff on top of my video. So I'm actually going to click on my face here, this background. I'm going to delete it entirely, and I'm going to export to the page again. It's going to have this text over here. Now, I could, in some programs, just save this as an SVG file, and it would work unless the program I'm using to edit doesn't have the font that I picked and then it's going to screw everything up. So I'm still going to export this. I'm going to export as. I'm going to change the number on here. I'm just going to put underscore B so I know which the second thing I've made. Hit export again. If you forget to press this button, which I have on a few occasions, uh, then you're going to have to come back and do it over again. And now... I have another file which I exported to my desktop. I've got one that is a title card that I can upload to YouTube, but I have another one where it looks blank, but this is actually clear. It's not white, it's clear. So I could actually go into, say, this program here, and are we seeing everything clearly? We are not. What if I do, there we go. And I can press the plus button in OpenShot. I'm going to go to desktop because that's where I saved it. I'm going to pick that one, open. And so it's an image. It looks like it's a black background here because that's how OpenShot shows blank areas. But I can literally drag this in to where it needs to be. And oh look, it's superimposed. And now, if I hit play, I'm not going to hit play because then you hear me talking over top of me talking. Well, basically, now I'm making funny faces again. But as you can see, it's superimposed over top of my video, but you can see through it. I didn't even need to do chroma key, which is fantastic because that's another step I didn't have to worry about. And now you know how to do that. So now that you know how to do it, go do it. Put it in your videos. I look forward to seeing it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.